What's up guys, welcome to your 13th Photoshop tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to fade a filter. Now we're not working with uh, smart filters anymore so go ahead and get rid of that, just get like a regular layer or a picture of pretty much anything you want. And uh, I know you guys were wondering, because in the last tutorial I said I was going to go to Food Lion but I actually uh, just found an apple pie from McDonald's in my refrigerator from last time so um, that's what I'm eating right now. And uh, actually, in case you want to know, uh, whenever they had Monopoly at McDonald's last time, they had it for like a month. And uh, I went to McDonald's every day and played Monopoly, and I gained 13 pounds in a month. So uh, now you know. Uh, that's quite embarrassing. Shouldn't have told you that, but I did. So, anyways, to the tutorial. Now that I show you. Sh 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 I showed you guys how to use smart filters. I'm going to show you guys how to use a regular filter. Now, not only masking, but you can also use a selection tool like anything that draws dots around your image is a selection tool. So go ahead and I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and draw a selection around here. And now, once you have your selection, you can apply a filter to the selected area. So go ahead and press something like... um what filter you want to use filter uh, stylize uh, let's use sketch chrome that's a good one so looks good and now we have a filter applied to the cow's head but sometimes you don't want the full intensity of the filter and you want to be able to adjust the opacity of it so in order to do this while the filter is still selected go ahead and press edit fade chrome or it's not going to say fade chrome for everything. It depends on what filter you're using. It might even say fade. But put fade something. And that's the fade your um, uh, whatever filter you're using. So now you can go ahead and lower the opacity. And that is how you lower uh, opacities of filters. And another thing you can do is select the mode. I know we didn't go over modes. But um, these pretty much just give you a new kind of cool effects. The modes. But anytime you want to work with a filter that's how you do it you put edit from up here and then you put fade and that's how you do it so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this since I don't want it and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that too by pressing control alt Z and now we're back to our regular image so another thing I want to teach you guys in this tutorial is how to work with contrast and how to focus an image so there's a um, new filter for this and I'm not going to select anything and when I don't select anything and applies it to the whole layer so make sure you got your layer selected and press filter then you want to press sharpen and then you want to press unsharp mask this is the best filter to uh, sharpen your image so turn these all to zero and I'm going to go through them one by one with you adjust my microphone right now and pretty much how this works is by sharpening it how it works is it increases the contrast between neighboring pixels so for example um, this like this green right here and this brown it will increase the contrast between that and therefore it'll give the appearance of sharpening your image so it pretty much is like if you had a camera that was blurry and you turn the camera lens until it came in the focus sharper uh, that's what this effect is doing right now except instead of turning the lens we're doing it on a computer so let me go with these go through what these things mean right now um, you have three settings right here amount radius and threshold the amount is pretty much how much you want to sharpen so um, as you slide this higher it's going to produce um, kind of um, it's going to be a stronger effect the higher you go and it's going to go from 500 you usually never want to go to 500 unless you're going for like a weird artsy effect but uh, I usually put mine around like um, well I'll put it pretty high like 79 just so you, I can make sure you see it on YouTube so again amount is pretty much a strength now the radius determines how wide the edge is remember I said that it uh, increases the contrast between edge the higher you go um, it's going to be it's going to look at a bigger area so let's go ahead and put this to let's see what looks good um, 
I'll put like 22 or something just so you can see it. And as you see, the contrast is getting more and more. And I I normally wouldn't go this much, but um, just for so you can see it on YouTube easy, I will. So now once I toggle that on and off, you can see that the cow is coming uh, pretty much uncontrasted and then contrasted. So whatever pixels are near each other, they contrast and pretty much just makes it pop out. Now, when you're doing this for real, don't put your amounts as high as this is. You're probably going to want to put it like... Yeah, some, something around like uh, that right there to sharpen your image. But for YouTube purpose, let's uh, blow this baby up so you can really see it pop. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And this last one, threshold, right here, he didn't think I'd get to it, did you? This pretty much is the value that it needs to be between pixels in order to sharpen. So, for example, when you have it as zero, there needs to be a little difference, so it sharpens a lot. When you have all the way up to 255, then it's not even going to notice the difference, so it's not going to sharpen at all. So I always leave this to zero and just adjust the amount and radius. So remember the rules? Um, adjust the amount and radius by like guess and check pretty much just move your sliders and never move the threshold unless you know you absolutely need to but usually never want to move the threshold so again once I blow these up and I uh, toggle on my preview on and off that is how you can bring a blurry image into focus and again normally you wouldn't want to do it this much but uh, just so I can make sure you see on YouTube that's what's going on so thank you for watching my tutorial on uh, focus and contrast and also filters and in the next tutorial I'm gonna be showing you other cool stuff that you can do with um, probably a sharpening and stuff so thank you for watching um, I'm going to enjoy my apple pies and I will see you next tutorial